My name is William Stetson. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at Stetson Powell Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Center here in Burbank, California. This is a case study of an arthroscopic excision of an os acromiali. I'd like to thank my co-author, Alex McIntyre. The acromial apophysis develops from four separate centers of ossification, including the basiochromium, metaochromium, mesoachromium, and preochromium. The type of osochromiali are defined by the unfused segment immediately anterior to the site of nonunion. There can, a, there can be a failure of fusion of these ossification centers, including the outer ossification centers of the acromion. Failure of fusion can occur at many different stages. At age 15, the three separate ossification centers are present, but usually by age 25, all the centers have fused. The most common site of failure of fusion for the acromion is the mesoacromion. The incidence is between 1 to 15 percent and bilaterally is seen in approximately 62 percent of all cases. It can also be con confused with a fracture and sometimes getting the contralateral x-ray can help in diagnosis. A symptomatic os acromiale is a common pathology. There have been inconsistent outcomes of treatment with various surgical techniques described in the literature. The diagnosis of a symptomatic osochromiale can be made by pain and local tenderness at the site, a hypermobile fragment, positive impingement signs, and positive local injection tests at the site of the osochromiale. Patients with symptomatic osochromiale, the pain is attributed to local inflammation at the nonunion site, arthritic changes of the AC joint due to hypomobility of the os, and also outlet impingement due to the pull of the deltoid, of the deltoid on the os acromiali fragment. Non-surgical management of a symptomatic os acromiali includes rest, restriction of activities, and sometimes local steroid injections into the os acromiali site. Surgical management includes fragment excision, acromioplasty, or open reduction and internal fixation of the os acromiali fragment. The excision of a pre-acromion, the satisfactory results have been reported in the literature. However, the excision of a mesoacromion has shown inconsistent results because of weakness, pain, and also deltoid dysfunction. Up until this point, most of the cases reported in the literature have been done open, and there's very few cases that have been reported with arthroscopic excision of the os acromiali. This is a case report of a symptomatic os acromiali, in particular a mesoacromion. The patient also had underlying osteoarthritis of the acromioconvicular joint. Treatment options included open reduction and internal fixation, open excision, or arthroscopic resection of the mesoacromion. This is the case history of a 47-year-old left-hand dominant male who suffered a work-related injury to his left shoulder following a motor vehicle accident in December of 2007. At that time, an MRI and MRI, arthro MRI arthrogram showed a slap lesion and a mesoacromiali. He failed conservative management, including rest, restric restriction of activities, physical therapy, and a subacromial cortisone injection. In September 2008, he underwent an arthroscopic slap repair with a subacromial decompression. At the time of surgery, the os acromiali was stable upon inspection. The patient made a full recovery. He regained full range of motion and strength of his shoulder with no pain. He was able to return to work and activities with no restrictions. Okay. In August of 2013, he presented again with an insidious onset of left shoulder pain. He had superior pain localized over the acromion. Upon physical examination, he was tendered to palpation at the lateral acromion. He also had pain with overhead motion, popping, stiffness, and associated weakness of the left shoulder. He had no improvement with the subacromial cortisone injection. However, he had a moderate amount of improvement with when he had the cortisone injection into the os acromiali. However, the pain returned in approximately six weeks after the injection. After six months of rest, restriction of activities, and physical therapy, he had no significant improvement in that pain of the left shoulder. Here you see an x-ray of the left shoulder, including the mesoacromiali, which is indicated by the red line. 
patient also had a previous acromioplasty, and he also has some mild AC joint osteoarthritis. In addition, he also had an axillary view, which also shows the mesoacromiale, again, indicated by the red line. The third x-ray seen here is the supraspinatus outlet view. Again, you can see it's the previous acromioplasty that had been performed, also with the os acromiale, again, evident by the red line. Here we see the pre-op MRI arthrogram, again, the os acromiale or meso acromiale in particular is seen with the red lines. The pre-op MR arthrogram, again, now the coronal views show the os acromiale or again the meso acromiale evidenced by the red lines. After failing conservative management, he was taken to surgery in June of 2014 where we performed an arthroscopic excision of the os acromiale and also the arthroscopic Mumford procedure. At the time of surgery, the type 2 slap lesion had healed, the rotator cuff was intact, and there is no subacromial bursitis or inflammation. We'll now go through the details of that procedure. Here we are in the subacromial space, and again, the rotator cuff is down below. We're viewing from posterior to anterior with the shaver in the front. There is no evidence of any bursitis, and the rotator cuff is intact. We are again viewing from posterior to anterior. The radio frequency device is coming through the lateral portal. We are now taking all the soft tissues off the undersurface of acromion. And we are outlining it. There we'll find the os acromiale site and we'll we identify it before we do the resection. So as we continue with the radio frequency, radio frequency device, Looking from posterior to anterior, again, the device is coming out laterally through the lateral portal. We start to get in between the mesoacromiale. The acromion is uh, on our left. The base is to our right. As we get in there, we're starting to define the limits of the mesoacromion. Again, the radio frequency device is coming out laterally. There's the undersurface, the acromion. Here we're ex extending the lateral portion of the mesoacromion. As we go medial, we get the medial base. Again, we're getting in between the base of the acromion and the mesoacromial fragment. Again, viewing from posterior to anterior, you can see the unstable mesoacromial fragment. The radio frequency device is then peeling off the soft tissues laterally. We can see the deltoid fibers. It's very important to preserve the deltoid fibers so that will pre preserve muscle function after surgery. Before we begin the arthroscopic excision of the mesoacromion, it's very important to define the fragment both medially, as you can see here, and as we come out laterally, the posterior fragment. Again, the fragment is to our left or anterior. As we come out more laterally, you can see the lateral extent of the fragment. Again, you can see how it's unstable. Again, it's anterior to this. You can see the deltoid fibers to our left. And as we go more anteriorly, again, peeling off all the soft tissue, so we're going to free up that fragment before we begin that arthroscopic excision. We go more medially near the AC joint, as you can see here. Again, peeling off all the soft tissues before we start excising that fragment. Once we've identified the mesoacromiale fragment, the burr is inserted through the lateral portal. Again, you can see the posterior aspect of the fragment, lateral, anterior aspect, and medial aspect. Once we've defined it, the arthroscopic excision starts to occur, just as if we're doing the acromioplasty. We start with the anterior aspect and then start resecting the entire undersurface of the acromion. With the burr from the lateral portal, and then the posterior aspect, we start shelling out that acromial or mesoacromial fragment. Again, we try to preserve those deltoid fibers laterally. We're getting the very lateral edge. Again, those are those deltoid fibers laterally. 
and again, the entire arthroscopic excision occurs. Here again, we are shelling out the undersurface, the acromion, the burr coming from laterally as we work our way more medially. Again, a sweeping motion from front to back or anterior to posterior, also coming out laterally. Similar to what we do with an acromioplasty, but this time we're actually going to shell out the entire piece of that acromion. It's very important to get the medial aspect and also the anterior aspect of that. We don't want to leave any shell of bone. Again, out laterally and also medially. The very posterior aspect, as you can see here. always titrating our suction to make sure we get all those loose bony fragments out of the shoulder joint. Again, viewing from posterior to anterior, the burr is coming from the lateral portal. We're working our way medially here to make sure we get the medial aspect of that mesoacromion. Constantly using our suction. and then working our way anteriorly and excising the undersurface of that fragment. Here we're completing the arthroscopic excision. This is that anterior fragment and again it's a shell of bone. Sometimes it's hard to completely get with our arthroscopic burr. We have to shell it out. Again you don't want to leave any residual bony fragments. We then reinsert the radio fr frequency device through the lateral portal. You can see a little shell of fragment, the anterior aspect. We're peeling it away from the deltoid fibers. Again, we don't want to leave any residual bony fragments. So by peeling it away from the deltoid fibers, which are up above, we can then, after using our radio frequency device, we can insert our arthroscopic grasper and with a little bit of maneuvering we can then grab that bony fragment. What we'll do next is we'll put our arthroscopic shaver back inside the subacromial space and we'll debride out a little bit of the soft tissues to make sure we've done an adequate excision of that fragment. After excising that arthroscopic mesoacromiali, we then turned our attention to the distal aspect of the acromion. As the patient did have some mild to moderate osteoarthritis of the acromioclavicular joint, we performed an arthroscopic Mumford procedure in addition to excising the fragment. We then reinsert the arthroscopic shaver through the lateral portal, viewing anteriorly. There's the anterior aspect of the resection. The distal end of the clavicle is to our right anterior fibers of the deltoid coming out laterally making sure you've excised that entire fragment we then introduce the arthroscope through the lateral portal and reviewing from lateral to medial the arthroscopic shaver is coming from the posterior portal there's the distal end of the clavicle there's the anterior aspect of the acromion. The base of the acromion is to our right. Again, we want to make sure we've had adequate resection of that entire fragment. Make sure we've met, left no bony slivers of bone, if you will. What we do next is insert spinal needles to measure our resection. That's the base of the acromion to our right. Again, the distal clavicle is straight ahead of us. The anterior aspect of our resection is with the needle or spinal needle on the left. And you can see how much of the mesoacromial fragment that we have excised.
Again, we want to make sure we preserve those deltoid fibers because that will preserve deltoid function postoperatively. We can now rotate down. Again, look at the bursal side of the rotator cuff. Anteriorly, we shave out a little bit of bursitis. Rotating back up, we see the anterior aspect of our excision. Again, making sure we've not left no slivers of bone within those deltoid insertions. Posteriorly, again, the base of the acromion to our right. Again, and using our shaver to palpate the undersurface of the deltoid, make sure we've left no fibers. Here you see the postoperative x-rays. On the left, you see the axillary view. We've had adequate resection of that mesoacromial fragment. It's no longer visible. And then at the AP view, again, we've excised that entire mesoacromial fragment. The supraspinous outlet view also shows that we've excised that entire mesoacromial fragment. So here we are examining the patient two months postoperatively. This is left shoulder. Again, active assisted forward elevation is almost complete. Active assisted abduction complete. External and internal rotation at 90 degrees. Full range of motion. Adduction across his body. Near normal. Internal, internal rotation to approximately the L5 region. Again, complete. Now we're going to test his muscle strength. Again, keep in mind he's only two months postoperatively. He's demonstrating excellent internal external rotation strength. We stabilize the scapula. And again, he also has great strength uh, deltoid testing. So to review or in summary, an osochromiality can just be an incidental finding on x-ray. However, it can also be symptomatic. The question is, is how does an orthopedic surgeon determine if that osochromiality is indeed symptomatic or causing the patient's symptoms? One of the first things you can do on physical exam to see if there's tenderness at the non-union site. Two, check to see if there's pain with motion of the mobile segment. Three, do imaging studies, including MRI, show any reactive changes at the osochromiality site? And finally, response to injections of lidocaine and or corticosteroids into the non-union site can tell us if that mesoacromion or other osochromiality fragments are symptomatic or cause the patient's symptoms. When the osochromiality, or in particular mesoacromion, is determined to be symptomatic and non-surgical management does fail, there are surgical options for the symptomatic mesoacromion. The literature has described open reduction and internal fixation. However, we've seen some significant complications which occur, including non-union and also symptomatic hardware requiring removal of the hardware itself. Open excision has also been described in the literature. However, this can lead to deltoid dysfunction and weakness. Arthroscopic excision, as we've seen here, can show good results. Again, depending on the age of the patient, arthroscopic excision can, uh, cannot lead to uh, deltoid dysfunction, and it maintains the deltoid fibers, and is something to be considered in some patients, especially patients who are somewhat older. As described in this case report, arthroscopic excision should be considered in older patients, especially those with concomitant AC joint osteoarthritis. The advantages include a faster recovery, it reduces the risk of deltoid dysfunction, it eliminates the risk of loose hardware, and also can maintain strength in an early return to function and activity. Finally, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, we can be reached at stetsonpowell.com or www.sportsmedicinedr.com. I'd also like to thank my co-author, Alex McIntyre.